The annual festival of traditional music is probably the country's richest festival, leaving up to a quarter of a million pounds wherever it's held. But it must also be the most controversial, with its yearly inquest, condemnations of rowdiness and drunkenness, and the denials and justifications. But this year, from the Cashel Guild of the ICA, it's brought a pledge to do everything in its power to prevent a FLA ever being held in this country again. A protest issued by its press officer, Mrs. Sheila Crow, cites filth on the streets, debauchery and depravity. The town, she says, was subjected to a horrifying experience. The reason we protested so strongly was because it was such a dreadful event in this town. We had no conception that ever any such a thing would come to this town. We didn't know that such a thing could ever happen anywhere. It was really like a blitz, a three-day blitz on our town. Well, what kind of thing happened? What kind of thing? Our streets were always littered with drunks, broken bottles, food. People lay on the streets all day. At night, they all sat around our main street drinking, and every bottle was broken as they finished drinking it. But is that really all that serious, broken bottles? Well, uh, we, we have no doubt that, uh, there was a, that it was a real debauch. There was debauchery and depravity. We are, we are not in any doubt about that. In, in what way, though? Well, now, I, now uh, you can cut it now. <laughs> you don't want me to take you into the tents and things. Have you cut? Okay, we can cut it. Keep it on the feet. Oh. Well, just, just, just. Mr. Scroll, that's very strong language in your protest. How do you back it up? Because I saw it with my own eyes. But nobody else has come out and said this. Yes, but it, that, uh, I can't, that isn't my affair. But I saw it, and all our members saw it, and we are all prepared to say we saw it. See, even press reports that came out of Cashel suggested a very different picture altogether. That is one of our chief cribs, and in fact, that is why we started to write this letter in the first place, because we felt truthful reporting was not coming out from what was going on in Cashel. And uh, one reporter, Peter Alton, in The Nationalist, uh, he writes under Peter Alton column. He described what he saw in our town on Saturday night. And that will prove to anybody uh, what the conditions in this town were. But haven't the national and provincial papers criticised various flowers over the years and not this one? Well, that is exactly what he said. And his explanation was that they looked as if they were bending backwards to make amends for what they had said formerly. You see, there is, a, again, another body of opinion altogether that holds that this is a very necessary Irish cultural festival. Well, we think Irish culture or music should not be mentioned at all in this context. We think they are completely out of place. We couldn't see in this town there was not anything that one would call our, anything Irish that we could be proud of or cultural. Or there was certainly no music that we could hear in the streets. No one could hear any music but the noise of the breaking bottles and the howling of the crowd. See, it might be expected that in a, a situation where a very big crowd like this suddenly comes into a small town, that there would be at least some trouble. Well, uh, possibly, but we did, not, we did not expect it, and that was something we gave no thought to. I, I must say we were both ignorant as well as innocent in this matter. And... No one who, d who didn't see this could ever imagine it. It was something that just had to be seen to be, to be believed. So everyone in the town was terrified, really terrified. Most people in this town hardly slept during those three days. They were afraid their houses would be broken into, which happened in a couple of cases. And they were really too afraid. One doesn't sleep if one is afraid. With this mob roaming the streets, and they roamed the streets in groups, or whatever you call them, gangs. But in that case, wouldn't there have been uh, a flood of complaints to the Gardaí? Well, of course, the Gardaí, you will have to ask about that. It's quite possible that there were many complaints, and I do know of several people who had to call the Gardaí to clear their houses, and various, you know, to help out at various times. The, the ICA in Cashel did say that they will do everything they can to stop flower being held here again. That what, is, in fact, can you do about it? We will do, we have said, and we are very sincere about this, that there is absolutely nothing that we can possibly do that we will not do. We feel we're going to influence public opinion as far as possible. 
get as much publicity as we can, and in the final issue, call upon the government to stop us, and certainly call upon them to stop using public monies for such an orgy as this was. But everybody's impression of every flower seems to be different, with some townspeople condemning them and traditional music enthusiasts ranking each better than the last. Mr. Lauris O'Morocco, the national president of Colthus Kjolthori Air and the organizers, has heard it all before, and to him, Cashel was one of the best. I don't deny for a moment that you have certain things happening at Flannery Kjol that we wish weren't happening there, but I think this applies to all walks of life dance halls and these pseudo-sophisticated events which perhaps won't get any publicity and at other festivals as well. Therefore, the charges themselves must be considered. I don't know what these charges are at the moment. Well, can I just tell you, uh, charges of debauchery, depravity, drunks in the streets, filth in the streets, broken bottles and a list of others. Well, I tell you, the debauchery and the depravity I'd be inclined to leave to the clergy because I believe that is their work. Uh, any people who mention debauchery, I don't believe they even know the meaning of the word to start with, and depravity. When you ask these people to mention specific cases, they're not able to do it. The question of people being drunk on the streets, definitely we had people who were over-intoxicated, but they were in a very small minority. The question of broken bottles and litter on the streets, if you only have a gathering of a thousand people or two thousand people, even for a couple of hours together they're going to throw uh, glasses or what have you around, sweet papers and so on. But if you have a gathering of 80,000 people over three days at an event, certainly you're going to have an accumulation. But in fairness to Cashel Urban Council, this was all cleared inside of two hours. Well, there are various other facts that the ICA in Cashel can, can put up. They mentioned, for example, there were 400 guards drafted in, there were 248 casualties. Surely this indicates the flower, at the very least, wasn't all it should be. Not at all. As a matter of fact, uh, those statistics were presented in order to give that impression. Right, we had 400 guards on duty. These were divided down into three shifts, which would have meant approximately 130 guards on duty at all times. Now, at any time in Cashel, we have five guards and one detective for a population of 2,700 people. The population of Cashel over the three days increased by 30 times, and the number of guards increased accordingly. I don't accept these as being any indication whatever that these things that the ICA have claimed have happened at the flag cure are true. But if the flower were all that prim and proper, why would anybody be bothering to protest? Well, I would say this much, perhaps in fairness to the ICA, and I don't want to be hard on the ICA because I believe that they rushed into print too quickly, and if they had waited a while longer after the event, they might have considered matters perhaps in a more sensible and realistic way. When you have big crowds at an event, and if you're not used to big crowds, like perhaps some of these ladies in the ICA were not, then you might be inclined to get a little agitated about it. But when you look back in retrospect and realize that there were in fact no serious incidents, no damage at the flag cure itself, you might be inclined to say that it's all good sport and good fun, and you might be sorry that you ever mentioned things like the ICA mentioned.